harmony. As always, with a sponsor video, we like to give away a copy. So if you'd like to win a copy of this game, then do let us know down in the comments what your favorite visual novel is. A thanks to Don't Nod for sponsoring this episode, where we're going to have a look at Harmony Fall of Reverie. Yep, this is their latest game and tells quite an interesting tale of two dimensions almost coming together and the, and the decisions that you make affecting a number of outcomes as you play. Yeah, so we'll go over the main features of the game. We'll go over all the usual things we discuss, the story gameplay, as well as the lovely visual art style and the soundtrack. And as you'd expect, it won't be scored because it's a sponsored video. All right, Harmony Fall of Reverie, what's it all about? Well, let's find out. Let's start off with the narrative then. You play as a young lady called Polly who's returned to her hometown in a place called Atina. Yep, she's been gone a while after having a falling out with her mother, but on hearing of her sudden disappearance, she comes back to where she grew up. Now, early into the game, she's almost pulled into another dimension, a place called Reverie, where she actually almost holds the title of like High Priestess, doesn't she? And uh, at this place you will meet a number of characters called Aspirations. The first one you meet is Bliss, you'll soon meet Power, I'm sure you get the idea, and you'll need to use them as you go on to start to strengthen the world of the living and also this world of reverie by finding your mother. Yeah, as you search for your mother, there's a corporation that's made known to you called the MK Corporation that are almost bringing a totalitarian regime to the city. Absolutely. Now, the overriding threat of this company is there and there'll be decisions that you make based on them, but it is ultimately about finding your mother as doing so will almost bring peace to both worlds and the decisions you make along the way will have a, a huge bearing on this, almost closing off entire story arcs that you won't be able to see unless, of course, you play through the game again. Now, you've probably played some of Don't Nod's other games, things like the Life is Strange series, and this keeps, I would say, parts of it, but it actually makes quite a big leap into new territory. This is more of a visual novel, but it has a very strong choice-based system known as the Augural. What this is, is it's essentially a map of the potential paths that your choices may take. And these are all tied to those aspirations. That's right, so you'll see the nodes as you go along the org rule. These are the points at which the story can deviate. And as Mark just mentioned, the aspirations play a huge part of this. So for example, you may be forced to make a decision or speak to somebody and bearing on how you speak to them, for, I'll give you a, an example of a, a very early one being a conversation with an old friend where you can say what you feel they probably want to hear or what they should hear and one will be bliss the aspiration of bliss and one will be the aspiration of power and obviously that will take you on a path you'll earn a point for either bliss or power based on your choice and then later on in the chapter this will unlock which arc you then go down and at the end of a chapter there's an overriding outcome and depending how many of each of those points you have will determine which of these you then unlock and that will have a major bearing on the story. Now I was just saying to Glenn what I loved about this so far I've played a couple of visual novels since he basically said you should try Raging Loop and what I liked here was how quick it is so you have a little bit of dialogue which is very often spoken it mm. actually has voice actors and then you get to make a choice. Now there are some clever things in here as well aren't there Glenn like the revoke system. Yeah so for example at certain points you will see slightly into the future that's what's quite interesting mm. about this system is that it does allow you a peek into the future in terms of the choice you make. So you can have a bit more of a bearing on your own destiny which isn't always the case in these games and doing so will allow you to see the choice that you can make and then it will show you what will be revoked if you do that so for example choosing one particular path may mean that you then can't ask a question about something else so it's not just about the next choice sometimes you're thinking two steps ahead and it's not just about right and wrong is it it's not just good and bad choices it's very much everything operates within gray areas we did a few things already in the game that very much felt like the right decisions and then you get to look at the end of chapter the major outcomes and the choices we were on the path to didn't sound as optimistic as i thought they would yeah exactly and that's quite an interesting take and i also liked just to build on that point but move away slightly the aspirational characters the way they're portrayed it's made very clear that they're not good or bad they are exactly what they are 
They are power, they are bliss, so they will operate in that way with no real empathy for anyone else's viewpoint because they don't have it. And that will come across in the decisions that you have to make. And sometimes maybe you do have to be that bit more powerful. Mm -hmm. And in isolation, that's a good choice. But when you take in the outcome at the end of it, it might have steered you towards a path that wasn't the way you wanted to go. And I really did actually quite enjoy that aspect of the game. Certain consequences will become inevitable nodes within that same system, won't they? The decisions you make will open up what's called an inevitable node. In this instance, it may be that a character because of the way that you've portrayed yourself will then have to say something and you can't control that so you'll have to let that bit play out and that again will then open up another set of circumstances afterwards. So the aspirations each have their own realm, don't they, that you can go and visit? Yeah, so you have your island that you are visiting, which is called Tina, and then you have Reverie, as we mentioned earlier, which is the uh, the alternate dimension where you kind of became, as I mentioned, almost like a priestess. But within that, each of the aspirations has their own realm or area that you will visit, and you will learn a lot more about them as you play. Again, I really did like the take on them. Mm -hmm. I liked the way that they were neither good nor bad. They, they just were. And, and you know that they had their own agenda which was very much fueled by the feeling that they were you know the uh, the part of, of your consciousness that they were showing and uh, you needed all of them at certain points to be a rounded person you know so the game is portrayed in a hand-drawn style certainly in terms of the the character animations and backgrounds to a, a larger extent although they kind of flip between hand-drawn 2d and a more 3d style in certain situations if we just touch on the character animations uh, to begin with, they, they very much had a, a traditional style to them. You know, I, I would, some of the characters, Power, for example, I was saying to Mark, you could have plunked him into something like Mask or Thundercats in a certain context and they would have fit quite nicely. You know, they very much have that, that 80s hand-drawn look to them. Yeah, it's very uh, much a traditional animation style, as Glenn said. And he actually pointed that out halfway through. And actually, having just come from Loop 8, the difference is quite stark. They were very much static characters on screen. It mm. makes a big difference having the voice acting and proper animation. If we move on to the backgrounds, as we mentioned, you have that mixture of 2D and 3D at times. The 2D have that that lovely, mm. almost like a watercolored look yeah. to them at times, don't they? And, and when you fuse that with the island, which is quite an interesting mix of almost like Mediterranean, very beautiful colors, but then you do have this, this glimpse of this totalitarian uh, agenda that's creeping in and it is made very clear it's, it is exactly that. It's almost like, uh, if I can refer back to like the prequel Star Wars films, where you know something's coming, you know something bad is happening, but it's not quite there yet. It reminds me of that, obviously, but with a, a near future setting, but not quite as far-fetched as that. Perfect. So as for the soundtrack, it's composed by Lena Rain, who worked on Celeste. Mm. Now, obviously, that's a very famous game. This, I think, is a bit more challenging as far as the audio scape goes. She basically took a lot of real-world instruments and orchestral sounds that you would know, and then she's put them through synthesizers to give it almost like an unnerving quality. Yeah, and it's very individualized to each moment it's not a case of having like a looping soundtrack that plays through uh, and you do certainly feel that at certain points those those poignant moments for sure The game retails at £22.49, or your regional equivalent, which can be seen on screen, which I think is a reasonable price, and there's a 10% discount that goes on until June the 15th. Yeah, now bearing in mind the sort of game it is, there are going to be a number of times where you make a decision that, as I said earlier, closes off a whole story arc. So there's certainly replay value here as well if you are someone that enjoys visual novels. And as Mark mentioned, of the two of us, I am someone that enjoys them more, but Mark has uh, certainly given them a go lately and, and enjoyed what he's played. But this one, it does come in much smaller chunks than a lot of others. So if you're someone that's a little hesitant, that's something to bear in mind because it certainly does help the game to flow better than, than some of the games in the genre. Lovely. As always with our sponsored content, we do like to try and give away a copy. So if you'd like to win a copy of this one, just let us know your favourite visual novel down in the comments. So hopefully that's given you some sort of idea as to what to expect from Harmony Fall of Reverie. Very enjoyable game. I've been quite pleasantly surprised in terms of uh, just how complex the story gets, but how it, it doesn't throw it all at you at once at the same time. It's a nice, enjoyable game to play. Brilliant. And thanks to all of you that enjoy the content. Thanks from Glenn and I as we hit, I think it was like, what, 318,000 subscribers? It was indeed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy numbers. Thanks to all of you and to our Patreons and members. And as always, just for all things Nintendo all the time, keep your switch up. Lovely job. Take care and happy gaming.